So it's been a while to get it to this spot. Got the machine finally turned on. Um, obviously the, the fluorescent light works fine. Not that that's a surprise. Um, it does home when you turn it on. Now well, the first thing you need to do is calibrate essentially the, um, the tube current. So the instruction book says that we need to, oh by the way, it says the working temperature needs to be from 6 to 32 degrees Celsius. So that will give me an idea of the maximum temperature for the tube. Because um, that's assuming that the tube, I mean if that's the ambient temperature, then that wouldn't allow for any heating. So I'm assuming that anything is going to be over that. They say here that it needs to be 25 liters, which is awfully close to 5 gallons. Now here's the weird thing. It says 0.6 amps for the tube current. Yeah, I'm guessing that's wrong. If it's 0.6 amps at 20,000 volts, Let's just round down and call that 10,000 watts. Not only that, the scale doesn't even go past 30 milliamps. So I'm guessing they mean 6 milliamps. And, and that's what I did. Um, my tube just fell off. The exhaust. There we go. This tube doesn't want to stay on at all. Okay. So, with it set, I turned this all the way down and I slowly worked it up. And now if I hit test, it goes to just a shade under 6 milliamps. And we have a tiny little dot underneath the, the uh, head there. And that means that the laser did fire. There's uh, the test button, that's the one I just used. You have to use the engraving button, I think, if you want to engrave. I'm not sure what happens if you don't hit that button. And then this unlabeled love, <laughs> you know, on a machine like this, you always want unlabeled buttons. This button does the um, the spot laser. So that's great, I guess. Um, also, can I just ask why? Why do this? This makes no sense. So we've got two USB A's on the same cable. And finally the coup de gras Moshi Draw. This app sucks. There's just no way around it. I don't even understand what I'm doing. So uh, I ran a test earlier just trying to print that, um, that character and it wanted to draw a border which it did and then next I tried to have it engrave fill a circle or that that same rectangle and you can see that it seems like the stepper motor stalling And um, on one hand, that's promising, but on the other hand, that, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but that huge shock over to the right it was entirely uncommanded. And um, I found that you have to be really fast on the power switch because people have talked about these machines crashing their heads against the axes all the time and so I've actually had to 
shut off the machine to prevent the y-axis crashing twice and then the x-axis crashing once. So um, not only that, you can see again how there's steps in the engraving, and I think that's from a, a step motor stall. And, and, and they all seem to be going this way for a while, and then it seems like now they're going to the right. Um, also, it looks like it's the laser output is getting quite low on the right-hand side. And um, this is the beginning of a longer cut. And it started here, and it went off, and then the laser output just trailed off and went away. So something is preventing the laser from getting the current it needs long term. And I don't know if I've got the current set way too low. Um, I'm a bit gun shy about setting it much higher without knowing for sure what setting I need it to be at. But, I mean, it is making a pattern and, and frankly it looks nice. The resolution is good. So. I was able to solve the problem where the power of the laser fades out um, at the end of the line. And what that's related to, I think, is the physics and chemistry of the CO2 laser. I think what's happening is that if I try to go above the current that this tube can support, the CO2 breaks down. And uh, actually that happens in all CO2 uh, lasers is that the CO2 breaks down uh, in the plasma and um, you need to have some way of replenishing that lost active gas. Uh, in the case of flowing CO2 gases, that's just taken care of um, in, in large part by the, the fact that you're always getting fresh gas going through the laser. In a sealed CO2 laser, you need to have some other way to handle that and uh, most lasers have um, catalysts or uh, some other kind of a mechanism for taking the products that are created in the decomposition of the CO2 and remaking uh, the, the CO2 to replenish itself and it ends up being a sort of a closed loop chemical process. So what I think is happening is if I set this current too high, uh, the CO2 is being diminished more quickly than it can be replenished, and uh, the output drops precipitously. So uh, I had tried to set it for 6 milliamps uh, using the test button, but um, it never quite got there, so I kind of kept turning up the regulator to try to get it close. So 6 would be, you know, right after that longer line and it's about five, almost six now. But if I turn it up, it doesn't really go anywhere at all. So what I think is happening is exactly that problem. And it's better if I keep it on the low side uh, because then it's really stable. So again, that's a total bummer. I have no idea what the laser power is. I've been tempted to get a laser power meter they're uh, eighty dollars on eBay. They you know take about a minute. It's basically you take a black a black body um, probe and you stick it in the path of the laser, and then it measures the heat increase. So you know you can take the watts of the laser, put it into this black body. It will absorb that energy and then heat up appropriately. But I don't know, it's probably not worth it. It's, it's output is fine for my needs for now. It's literally been a week since that last bit of video where I show the uh, laser head engraving um, a pattern um, and it keeps stepping over to the side and then just rockets off to the side of the, um, the gantry. When I did that test, I was running MoshiDraw um, in VirtualBox on my Mac, and so what I've done is I went ahead and I installed Windows XP, super bare bones, it's as late as the updates go, um, in boot camp, so it's running natively on the hardware, and my hope is that it was the virtual machine 
that was interfering with the USB communications that was preventing this from working correctly. So I haven't done this. This is totally um, the first time I've tried this, so you're going to be finding out how it works just as well as me. Um, I'm going to do a quick test to see the laser output. Okay, we're just about five, five milliamps there, which I'm just going to leave. That's fine. Um, it's interesting to note that the engraving button was off. So um, that comes into play later. I wasn't sure if the engraving button hooked up to the protection input of the laser power supply and would prevent the test button from working. And it looks like it does. So um, later I'm going to make get rid of the engraving button and I'm going to actually build a protection, a safety system that measures water temperature, water flow, uh, lid switch, safety, other things like that. Okay, back to Moshi Draw. So Moshi Draw is awful and this is far from a tutorial but let's just see what it takes for us to get this thing engraved. It does everything, it wants to do everything in negative. I'm not really sure. It's because it wants to do stamps. Um, I don't like that really at all. And I don't know how to turn it off. But for now, that's fine. So, I think that it will set the origin to 10 millimeters um, from the top left corner. It'll do it 60.3 by 55.3 millimeters. And um, let's check it out. Well, <laughs> you just saw that it just tried to uh, jam up against the X and stop. So there you go. It wasn't the virtual machine. Moshi Draw is just a piece of crap. Well, just for fun, I'm going to try that one more time. Except I'm going to set it to be half the size and I'm going to tell it to go in the middle of the build area. So hopefully we can get an entire engrave and see if it actually finishes even with all the crazy steps. Um, Alright, well let's go for it. Oh, did it again. <laughs> oh, man. So frustrating. Because, honestly, just look at that. That's gorgeous. Why does it have to screw up? Why? It looks so awesome. Well, I guess the good news is the fundamentals are there. And when I get my new control board, working it's just going to be awesome this is my last attempt at Moshi Draw I've done everything I could think of with the most recent Moshi Draw 2014 um, on their website this is the CD that came with the laser cutter and some people said that their least CD had a video on how to set it up mine didn't mine only had uh, Moshi Draw and um, a fonts pack that included Chinese fonts. Uh, the Moshi Draw that it included is uh, Moshi Draw Left, which I vaguely remember hearing somebody have or say something about online. Um, what's funny about it is I deleted, I uninstalled Moshi Draw 2014, I uninstalled the driver to do everything fresh, and I installed Moshi Draw Left. Yeah, so this is what's on the CD, just Moshi Draw on the fonts. 
and tried to reinstall the driver and actually the driver on the CD from the factory didn't have all the sys files it was missing the sys file for um, the USB part of the driver the like wind chip something or other so that is ridiculous um, I'm gonna load up that same Hackaday logo and try out Moshi Draw Left and see if we still have the same problems One last thing before I call it a night. The temperature never really got all that high. It started at 20.1, I think. The highest I saw it get to was like 21.8, and it's already back down to 20.6. So I'm not nearly so worried about the cooling system now.